here to make sure your children don't end up in a hospital visit on Halloween is Dr. Sabrina Perkins, uh, pediatric emergency medicine subspecialist. Thanks so much for being here. Now, you had Jeff kind of putting on this cute little hat earlier, right? You look pretty cute, but you look cuter. <laughs> yeah, that fits you. Right? But the problem with it is it's too dark. Yeah, it is too dark. I mean, that's, I think, the concern that we would have with our you know, parents taking children out in dark costumes is they won't have the ability, these drivers won't have the ability to see the children. Probably twice as many accidents, many children being struck by vehicles, will occur uh, on Halloween evening. And that is the most common injury you That's see. the most common injury we will tend to see, and definitely one of the most dangerous. Okay. And, and the time for that is just right around dusk, right, or just before dusk? Is right. That when yeah. you the, see the most of those? Definitely. And what happens, I think, between 4 p.m. and 10 p.m. is when you have most of your trick-or-treaters, all those cute kids going around their costumes. Uh, but also, as the drivers are going around, the visibility is much less for the drivers, so it's harder for them to see your children in darker costumes. Well, and with this, you can remedy this with this costume. You could sure use thing. reflective tape, right? Oh, you definitely could use reflective tape, putting it on the sides of the costumes. We can definitely kind of slap one of those yeah, on you. you. Yeah, that way those. you're more yeah. visible to the drivers out there. And glow sticks. Oh, yeah. I think Healthy. you definitely get creative with your children. The children would enjoy that. Look, it's a glow bone. <laughs> oh, no way. Oh, yeah, they make, all, they make it cool this, to be seen. And this yeah. would be great if, if they were a doctor. They could actually carry the bone around. <laughs> there you go. So they can put that right. on the costume so yeah. that exactly. yeah, they can definitely. be seen and helps keep them safe. Right. I think that. that we want to make sure the children are safe, and by that, make them as visible as possible. Um, you probably all want to make sure that your costumes are also not too long or too baggy, where they can trip and fall. Or get That's, caught on something yeah, or something like that. They definitely can sustain their injuries that way with head injuries, uh, falling and maybe sustaining bone fractures. Oh, that's crazy. Well, I know yeah. we're going to show some x-rays here in yeah. a second, but we want to talk about costume safety, yes. especially mm -hmm. with, uh, with jack-o'-lanterns and, and fire. You gotta be yes. Careful that. We've seen some kids come in with burns. Um, it's the younger children. They kind of get interested in those jack-o'-lanterns that have candles. So the actual candle that's lit up, they'll reach in for it, and that's when they're going to get the burn. Okay. In case you just turn on the TV, Sabrina Perkins is with the Greater San Antonio Emergency Physicians. There's six locations. Part of the mess. You're part of the Methodist system. Yes. Aren't you? And let's. So can we show the the X-rays? The X-rays. Because hey. what are we looking at here? So here you're seeing the uh, radius and the ulna. Those are the two bones that you would see are fractured. Um, so your distal bones are definitely broken to the point where you can see them pretty obviously. Wow. Yeah. And that was actually. Um, an injury from a child that was struck by a vehicle. So this is kind of one of the ways, one of the ways they can come into the ER is seeing kids that unfortunately are hit. And luckily it wasn't any more than just the fractures that were sustained. Now, only because I've been on WebMD, the ulna and the radius are the arm bones. The ulna yes. is the one under, U for ulna under, and radius yes, is the top Yes, very bone good. Wow, in, in yeah, that's great. And then, of course, swallowing small items and candy. Yes, and we have definitely seen uh, a few kids come in. Look at that. Where they're actually, yeah, so I guess apparently this child was able to find a coin in their bucket of candy and treats and, was, and swallowed it. And so here we have kind of the, the reflection of that. So luckily it was in the intestine and so not so much of a concern. But there's all kinds of objects and toys that children can, can swallow. So on the other end, those parents that are giving out candy uh, or treats, Try to make sure we avoid those small toys and coins that can cause, you know, potential risk and injury to um, our little trick or treaters. So you see some crazy things that that can happen. Do you have any stories that one that just stood out where you went, oh my goodness? Oh goodness. Um, well, we do see a little everything. We see burns, but I think um, we've had children come in when they've been helping out with carving pumpkins, and then they manage to oh. to lacerate or cut their fingers. Um, yeah, that's. Probably one of the ones I can remember of. We have the simple ones too, an infant or you know smaller child in a stroller, and then they're running longer ways, getting excited, and the kid flies out of the stroller onto the wow. street. Oh no! <laughs> oh, We've seen no. those too. <laughs> the important thing to remember is that this is a lot of these injuries can be preventable. Yeah, all as long of these as you take precautions. All of these can be preventable. We just think a little bit about the child being in a costume that needs to be fitted, something reflective. Uh, making sure that they're being supervised, and um, and in the end, of course, keeping any kind of fire, you know, well lit candles around, out of the way, out of reach of the children that are that are younger and smaller. Right. Yeah. Well, and you've got kids too, so you know all about the homemade costumes. Oh, I know all about it. I have two of my own. <laughs> yeah, that's how this works. And we want to remind everybody: if you want to, you know, go see uh, the Greater San Antonio Emergency Physicians through uh, the Pediatric Emergency System, where can they find you? 
So I am actually at Methodist Children's Emergency Department. There are five other facilities under our group. Um, and so basically, I think if you have children that need to be seen, we are always willing and happy to take care of them. And it's a more personal experience rather than going in a traumatic emergency room where everybody's crazy, yeah, especially. Abs absolutely. And I think that that's the one thing that our Greater San Antonio Emergency Group is going to offer is um, definitely great care. You have 100% board certified physicians, but you'll get more of that personal feel when we get a chance to inform you of your illness and how you can take great care of yourself. We want you to have that number. I, we had it up on the screen there a second ago. It is 575-7777, Greater San Antonio Emergency Physicians. You can find them online at gsep-pa.com as well. Thank you, Dr. Perkins. Thank you very much. Will you be working on Halloween? I am off the hook this year. There you go. Oh, there I know. Go. That's why she's doing the TV show, because this is the scariest part right, right here. Exactly. Thank you very much for being here. It's a pleasure you. to Appreciate see you. It. Thank you.